Hi guys, welcome to Thick Geek. So today we are back with the daily lead code challenge problem. That's K inverse pair arrays. Uh, that's a lead code hard question. Lead code hard uh, 619. So it's basically uh, you can say a repeat question if you know how to. Uh, lastly, we are getting many lead code questions uh, based on DP. So similarly, this is the same. If you are not aware of it, then give yourself a time, understand this process, and then try. Okay, before beginning, just a request to you all uh, do like, share, and subscribe to my channel. If in case of any queries, do let me know. Okay, now let's begin. Okay. So, the question uh, the question says, You're given and add for an integer array nums okay you have to find the inverse pairs of integers such that for any two integers that's i comma j okay i should be less than j that means the index should be less but the value at that index should be greater okay but you have to keep in mind with one more thing that you have been given one more number that's k. Okay. This k will tell you how many exactly inverse pairs should be there. So inverse pairs, how you can form that is given and how many inverse pairs are required that is also given to you. And the answer should return in module of 10 power 9 plus 7. For the examples I have given, n equals to 3 and k equals to 0. So you know there will be 3, n equals to 3 is 1, 2, 3. And you have to find an inverse. So obviously in this particular permutation, there's no. Okay. No inverse, uh, no inverse array. And they say k is 0. That means exactly no inverse array should be there. So this is a condition that can only be possible. So whenever k is 0, that means the answer has to be arranged in ascending order. That means we don't get any inverse pairs and if we say coming here yeah no if k is 1 for the same that means only one could be there so to any of this you can say reverse any of these elements so if we reverse this only once why because we just need one now see uh, the index is 0 1 and 2 1 is less than 2 yes nums of 1 is greater yes so this is valid again if we do instead of this we interchange this again the index is smaller but the value is greater so this will also form one inverse array so that's how we need to approach this problem now for this problem we have a condition okay condition says uh, first of all you know we will be using dp here this is something you guys should be aware of okay now in dp what we'll do suppose we have an array with these elements okay we'll insert these elements in inverse way while we are adding that inverse values so the array that we will form should be that dp of n the last one and dp of k these two values you have okay this will be summation of dp of n minus 1 to dp of k minus i okay this is a summation so what is this i going to be i will range from 0 okay to n minus 1 this is the main mathematical process that we have to follow so similarly uh, for dp of k plus 1 again we will add this one more thing that's uh, k plus 1 would be also added that's what we'll have to approach okay now what would be the possibilities if we talk about 
so possibility is for n equals to 0 dp of 0 i hope you can see this for n equals to 0 dp of 0 comma k will be 0 okay for k equals to 0 only one arrangement is possible that means that all the numbers should be sorted now let's see this condition let's see if n is 4 okay so if n is 4 the numbers which we are having would be 1 2 3 and 4 okay for n equals to 4 these are the possibilities how many if we arrange in ascending order how many inverse are elements or inverse pairs are there i guess zero why because everything is an increasing so we cannot say for a smaller index that number is one higher okay so this is a valid thing for k equals to zero right so this is one of the base case that if k is zero that means all of this will be in ascending order so only one thing is possible that's all are ascending if n is already 0 now that means there is no number now k can be anything so for that case obviously permutation is zero. Okay. now coming to the other ones the other ones is similar to what to the value which we saw that dp should be uh, adding of this now let's take a smaller number and check for this okay so let's take the number or okay let's understand this problem itself uh, when n is 4 and now we can say k is 1 okay if k is 1 so you know we can arrange or we can reverse any of this so if we reverse the very first one one possibility is this if we reverse the second one so one possibility is somewhere here again the third one could be reversed okay. okay there could be a question if we interchange these two like there could be a question what if we interchange these two what will happen so let's see that also if we interchange these two not the adjacent one then in that case this is one of the arrays okay inverse pairs and this is also inverse pair why because 4 is greater so that is why we won't take this one for now we just need k equals to 1 so that's why k equals to 1 means adjacent if k is 2 then we can uh, skip one and we can say uh, we should reverse the one leaving behind okay this is somewhere so for k equals to 2 if we check here this will also be a valid one so what we did for k equals to 2 leave one and then arrange now so this we got two pairs for this we got two pairs this is the way that we have to follow you to keep in mind so that is why this process is going on that dp of n minus 1 should go on okay i hope this is clear with you all like how this should go on and this mathematical solution is actually it's telling us how we are approaching this problem for the first one we are reversing the one then for the second one we are reversing the second one and the final output that we will have would be dp of n into k sorry dp of n k Okay, that's what is the most important thing that's coming up. And traversal is like uh, you need to give a number. So DP, whenever you are creating the DP of array, that's and this array will have one one element greater. Okay, when you are creating the story array, you'll have one one element greater. plus one okay what we'll do now dp of 0 comma 0 should be initialized to 1 okay now dp of i comma 0 
will also be initialized to 1. Why? Because uh, you know for this case, whenever k is 0, we will just have the answer as 1. And then we will iterate and find the okay, me... okay. Yeah, in that case, I uh, will just explain like this only. Okay, so what we will do, first we will take a 2D array. We will make all DPs, first of all DP of 0, 0 as 1. Or you can directly say dp of all dp of i comma 0 as 1. Okay. And in that case, again that comes up, then we'll add it up. That means dp of i comma j will be dp of i of j minus 1. And if this is a dp, you can say if this is one of the arrays, So for this position, you will take its vertical and horizontal both and add this and give this number. Okay. And the modulus would be there. Now talking about this, we are always taking, if you take a 2D array, so that means we are just taking one previous row and not the whole of the array. So to avoid this, we can do it by a single array and creating a clone of this. As we have done, creating a temporary array. So this temporary array will clone just one previous row and we can use the same concept similarly. We are doing mod as it was given in the answer. For this, for the earlier solution where we had a greater, so there the answer was using the time complexity of n k square because of the number of uh, rows or you can say the space occupied or we are traversing the whole array but here the answer would go in order of n comma n into k. So that's how the solution goes on. Don't look at the solution. Try with your own approach. If in case there's some doubt, let me know. Till then, keep following. Thank you.